Hi, we are the Digital and Cultural Volunteer Literacy Group, and we're just going to take a quick second to introduce ourselves. So, hi everyone. My name is Vincent Seferic. My pronouns are he, him, and I serve at the Adult Education Center in Columbia Heights, Fridley. Hi, I'm Isabel Hewitt Link. I use she/her pronouns, and I serve at Gap School on the west side of St. Paul. Hi, my name is Kali. Um, I use she/her pronouns, and I serve at Hired in North Loop. And my name is Nicole. I use she/her pronouns, and I serve at Metro South Adult Basic Education in Bloomington. Um, so, a brief overview of our project and where our inspiration came from with the COVID-19 pandemic. Like a lot of people have experienced, there were a lot of changes. One of the main ones that we noticed at our sites being a very swift transition from in-person programming in classes to an online format. And what we found at our sites and at other sites with uh, other CTEPs that we were talking to, a lot of the volunteers or the staff that were working in those organizations didn't quite always have the skills to make that online transition. You know, they were used to the systems that were working in person, they were doing really well in person, and then the shift to online complicated things. Um, and then another thing that we noticed with that shift is a change in the way that people were communicating with each other and the way that we were approaching difference. And so we noticed these two problems come together and we decided that we wanted to come up with something to try and help ease those two issues in one. So we decided to come up with a training website, um, which I will drop into the chat right now. Um, so the website is a compilation of different resources. He has a lot of different organizations have created really wonderful resources and we wanted to bring them all together in an easily usable, user-friendly way. So in terms of CTEP alignment through this website, uh, one of the goals uh, for CTEP alignment that we were able to reach is teaching digital literacy through this website. So we have those digital literacy resources posted on our website. Also, we market it a little bit through ABE programs and CTEP sites so that we know volunteers um, are gonna be able to use this site um, to help themselves learn the digital literacy and cultural literacy skills. Uh, the book club reflections are also a portion of the website and they help uh, with the cultural literacy portion. Um, so those are a list of recommended books that we have on there and users of the website are able to read those books and write reflections as part of the cultural literacy training portion. So general goals of this project and um, we were able to finish that website um, and I believe it's in the chat now. Yeah, so in the website, you'll see um, two portions of content. One is for digital literacy and one is for cultural literacy. Um, like I mentioned, the book club is also something that we wanted to put up there and we were able to do that. Um, in terms of local volunteer outreach, our community partner was MAVA, that's the Minnesota Alliance for Volunteer Advancement. Um, we were able to have conversations with them about what they saw volunteers needed and that sort of helped us define the focus areas um, for what was gonna be on our website. As far as what we accomplished with this website, um, though we didn't address all of our goals originally, we added really exciting goals that we didn't um, think about from the very beginning, like the book club, which was a late addition that really helped to um, engage the resources that we provided um, that specifically catered to intercultural communication barriers. Um, one thing that when we actually discovered MAVA as a community partner was that they are trying to racially diversify volunteer populations. However, with the current volunteer population being majority white and upper middle class volunteers, um, there are often a lot of intercultural communication barriers between those volunteers and majority BIPOC um, served populations. Um, so we really wanted to address those barriers that are exacerbated by um, the digital platform. Um, and something we were really excited to include were um, resources on implicit bias um, with implicit bias, um, indicators that um, folks could take to really start to acknowledge those biases that they may have and then start to learn about different cultures, especially um, the most, um, the largest immigrant populations from other cultures and communities um, in Minnesota that these um, majority white upper class volunteers may encounter at their service sites. Um, and so that was really great to partner with MAVA and Literacy Minnesota to connect to those populations of volunteers um, and get our resources out to a broad um, audience, as well as um, sending out this 
website to our own service sites and getting used there. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the uh, stumbling box or the issues that we encountered and kind of how we dealt with them and how it kind of affected the project. Um, so one of the first ones was just maintaining good lines of communication with um, our community partner. Uh, we never met in person, everything was remote, uh, everybody's busy and dealing with the pandemic. Um, so communication is not always ideal. Um, and so I think this uh, affected the project that we started to reach out to more and more organizations. So we didn't just rely on one community partner or one resource for getting our um, website out to the people who need it. So that kind of led us to do more of that. Um, as far as volunteer training, since our project is aimed at all volunteers, we're looking at a bunch of different organizations and volunteer training is um, different depending on the organization. And so trying to um, make it a little bit more uniform and applicable to the majority of organizations was a little bit difficult. Um, and that leads into the next one about the resource overload. So um, cultural literacy and digital literacy are massive topics. You can take college courses on these two topics. Well, maybe not digital literacy, but cultural literacy. Um, you can study it for months and we're trying to put it into one page on a website. So trying to find what is most needed and making it easily digestible for the majority of volunteers. And then Weebly is a not the most fun thing website builder to use. And then outcomes. Um, since our goal is to have this website used, um, not just seen, but actually used, um, we didn't have a great way to deal with that. We can see a little bit of web traffic, but you know, the main goal is that this is goes out to organizations and, and is being used actively. So So as we look to the future past all the stumbling blocks and everything we've worked on up to now, we designed the site so that it could be adaptable. Information is always changing, technology is always changing, and we're always learning new ways um, to keep moving forward. And so we wanted to make sure that the website was also able to do that and it wouldn't be something that would kind of get stuck um, in the past. And so we have set up all the login information so that it can be used by future CTEPs. That's been given to Lizzie and also we'll be put in our handoff documents for future CTEP sites. Um, we have distributed the website link now to all of you, but also to a bunch of different organizations around the area so that hopefully it's implemented in training processes in organizations around the Twin Cities metro area. We already know for sure it's being used in at least two different locations, probably more. Um, so we feel, feel pretty confident that it's going to be used. Uh, however, as Vincent said, it's hard to tell because Free Weebly doesn't let us see how much it's used. Um, but we feel that it can be adapted in the future. It can always be expanded upon. Again, like Vincent said, it's such a massive subject matter that there's always something else that can be added. There are a lot of things that we just didn't have time to get to. So it could always be used as a future CTEP civic engagement project as something that people could expand upon and something that people could add to even more. Um, and we also have in place an email. So if people have comments, concerns, questions about the website, or if they want to give some feedback about one of the books they read for our book club section, that email is also being given to our future CTEPs and has been given to Lizzie so that it can carry on in the future. And um, finally, our main takeaways from this project. Um, we did learn a lot about how to work across organizations um, since MAVA was our main community partner, but we were also in communication with other organizations. Um, so we learned a lot about communication and coordination. One specific example of something we learned um, is that originally when we partnered with MAVA, they offered us a spot in this webinar they were planning. Um, but since we didn't really follow up with them, um, after agreeing that we were really excited to be able to apply our website in this way, um, sharing our information in a webinar, um, they ended up actually leaving us off the schedule. Um, and we realized that um, in the communication across organizations and with really busy community partners, we would need to follow up more. Um, but also we learned that it is okay that we didn't need to share this in a webinar format. It was almost better to have this as a compilation of resources and not pose ourselves as like the experts on any of these topics. Um, and we also learned a lot about combining all of these ideas in a cohesive format. Because again, like Vincent mentioned, these are huge topics 
Um, there's endless resources. And during our research, we found a ton of ideas and research. So we had to learn to, instead of having quantity, create quality and create that in a cohesive and readable format, especially since we are catering to an audience that might need help in digital literacy, having too complicated of a website would not work for that purpose at all. So we learned a lot on that and there's definitely work that continue, could continue in the future. Um, but yeah, overall um, positive experience. So now um, questions from the audience. All right, we've already gotten some comments about very impressive website and a uh, list of resources. Um, I had a question starting off while people are writing in. You know, did, did either maybe a group like MAVA or Literacy Minnesota consider you adding these to their website? And so like not having a separate standalone website, but, and I know there's like always the question of like, well, who's gonna update it uh, and think, but yeah, I was curious about that. So we considered we consider that when we were talking to Mava and to the other organizations and think the plan that we came up with is this could be, you know, this could be a standalone website and then the link would be accessible on their websites as well. So that's something that we've distributed to them. So it would be instead of having the resources duplicated in too many places, because that could get too confusing, they have a way to access the website on their website. So it's all connected. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, did you want to talk about Weebly? And kind of, I was just curious, kind of how you chose that. As were there other options? Would would you have used Weebly? Would you use it again if you did this over? I think Vincent so that would say actually... no. I'm guessing Vincent's like <laughs> shaking his head there. So yeah, Vincent was not a fan of Weebly. Um, <laughs> we ended up choosing it um, because. It was just the easiest to get into because several of us had had experience with Weebly before. We had been recommended to try out Wix, um, which we thought about doing, but just since we hadn't used it before, that felt like an extra learning curve that we didn't need to add. Um, and we thought about um, other um, paid for websites, but also thought that it'd be better to go about this without um, fundraising or paying for a platform so that the website could continue after our service. Great. Um, and we have a comments from Martha. Um, Weebly is blocked as a security risk by Hennepin County, so we can't use it at the library. So I guess that's another another limitation there. So yeah. Um, Aaron asked, did you consider using Google Sites? I messed around with it. Yes, I so yeah. yeah. <laughs> I started yeah. to make a duplicate site just to see. Um, yeah, but then we'd already made so much progress in Weebly that we just stuck with it. Well, I think this is definitely, as you mentioned, I mean, this is one of those projects that's a huge potential to continue with CTEP for next year. And uh, either some members, either as a, pro a project like this, or just some members kind of taking this on as kind of a personal interest. So um, I'm sure we will, we will find a way to continue to update this and whether that's Weebly or not. Um, this is, these are hugely important topics and something that we really want to um, in kind of bake into the CTEP program. So I think also just for our Friday trainings that we have for CTEP members and being kind of more culturally competent, um, this is a huge, this is an incredible resource that you've put together.